Hi, we're out on the range today, so please bear with gunfire here in the background. And today, once again, we're talking about bird shot in your home defense shotgun. Why? A while ago, we did a presentation on bird shot in your home defense shotgun, and that led to questions about extra heavy loaded turkey magnums in your home defense shotgun, so we did a presentation on that. And that led to a lot of questions about steel bird shot in your home defense shotgun. So here we are. And the first topic of discussion is, why would you even use steel shot? Well, traditionally, bird shot is made of lead, and there's some good reasons for that. Lead is soft and easy to work with and easy to form into spheres. Being soft, as the lead goes down the barrel, it won't cause it any damage due to friction. Lead is very dense, therefore heavy, and it retains energy, and it just makes a good anti-bird projectile. So why would you use steel shot? Well, the concept is that there are some places where a lot of people have hunted a lot of waterfowl for a long time and a lot of lead shot ends up sinking to the bottom of whatever body of water. And people become concerned that all that lead is going to get into the ecosystem, so in some places laws have been passed requiring the use of steel shot or other types of non-lead projectile. In the state that I live in, if you're going to hunt waterfowl, lead shot is prohibited and most of the time people are using steel shot. So would steel shot be a good choice in your home defense shotgun, or even more relevant, if you're primarily a bird hunter and steel shot is what you happen to have, is it a viable option in your home defense shotgun? Well, I've got my Mossberg Maverick 88 20 gauge and my Mossberg 500 12 gauge and a couple of different types of steel shot and lead shot. Let's shoot it and see what we can learn. In comparing lead and steel shot, we have to discuss pellet count. Now this is Remington 20 gauge, 2 and 3 quarter inch, 1 ounce of number 4 lead bird shot. This is Winchester 20 gauge, 3 inch, 7 eighths ounce of number 4 steel bird shot. Both of them are number 4 pellets, but because steel is lighter than lead, you're going to get a higher pellet count, even though it's 1 eighth ounce less overall. In fact, enough more, it requires a 3 inch shell as opposed to a 2 and 3 quarter. So what is the pellet count? Well, it's not going to be exact from one shell to the next. I cut two of the Remingtons apart. One had 132 pellets, the other 127. But when I cut two of the Winchesters apart, one has 152 pellets, the other 161. So even though you have one eighth ounce less of charge, you have 20 or 30 pellets more, and that's not bad. But how will these two compare in terms of velocity? Let's go to the chronograph. Normally I set up the chronograph at 7 yards, but when I'm using a shotgun and multi-projectile rounds, I like to shoot at 4 yards. So let's start with our Mossberg Maverick 88 20 gauge and our Remington ammunition. 1235. 12.02. 12.21. 11.89 and 1209. Now let's see how that compares to the Winchester. And now let's try our Winchester 20 gauge 3 inch steel shot. 1387. 1476. 1477. 1460. and 1434. Now let's try some 12 gauge ammo. For 12 gauge I have Remington 12 gauge 2 and 3 quarter inch 1 and 1 quarter ounce of number 4 lead bird shot and Remington 12 gauge 2 and 3 quarter inch 1 and 1 eighth ounce of number 4 steel bird shot. I cut two of these apart and got 159 and 164 pellets. Cut two of these apart and got 218 and 226 pellets. So with an eighth ounce less we still have about 60 pellets more. Now let's take these to the chronograph. So now I've got my Mossberg 500 12 gauge and we'll start with the lead shot. 1292 1263 1282 1293 and 1263. Let's see how that compares to the steel. And now the steel shot. 
1354 1316 1288 1335 1325 and 1358. Now let's go crunch the numbers. Well, I crunched the numbers and here they are. Now with our 12 gauge lead shot, we got a mean velocity of 1278. You may have also noticed that I fired six shots instead of only five with that ammunition. One of those with a velocity of 1288 was so much less than the rest that I kept that out of the computations to come up with our mean. Now with our steel shot, we got a mean velocity of 1337. So when comparing lead to steel, we have projectiles of the same size, but with steel, a higher projectile count and an extra 59 feet per second more velocity. So it looks like going to steel is a plus. This becomes profound when we look at our 20 gauge results. With the lead shot, we got a mean velocity of 1,211, and with the steel, 1,446. So again, projectiles of the same size, but with steel, a higher pellet count, and 235 feet per second more velocity. That's a lot more. However, we are comparing two and three quarter inch to three inch ammunition. And the reason I'm doing that is because at my local stores, I could not find any 20 gauge two and three quarter inch with steel shot. But it's a common misconception that when you go from two and three quarter to three inch that you gain a lot of velocity. Quite often the opposite is true. A good example is 12 gauge two and three quarter inch double op buck nine pellet versus 12 gauge three inch double op buck 15 pellet. A lot more pellets, but significantly less velocity. But seeing the results with our steel, off camera I chronographed some Winchester 12 gauge three inch one and one eighth ounce steel BBs. Now, as where number four birdshot is about 13 caliber, BBs are about 17 caliber. They're significantly bigger, but we lose a lot of pellet count. Instead of with our number four shot having 218 or 226 pellets, I'm counting 83 pellets in these steel BB shells. But they also had a very impressive velocity at 1451. So you put all this together and it looks like if your home defense firearm is a shotgun and if you choose to load with birdshot, it looks like steel is the way to go. But as always, these are just numbers on paper. How will they translate into effectiveness on the intended target? Let's see if we can demonstrate that. And the way we'll test the effectiveness of our ammunition is with the meat target. Now for those who haven't seen it before, the meat target is leather jacket skin followed by pork steak pectoral, pork ribs, a bag of grapefruit to simulate lung tissue, more pork ribs on the back, four layers of t-shirt on the front, four layers on the back, and the whole thing followed by the new and improved high-tech fleece bullet stop. And I'll shoot from seven yards with our Winchester 20 gauge, three inch, seven eighths ounce of number four steel bird shot. Well, I've got our meat target taken apart, and with that shotgun at seven yards, the pattern was only about two and a half inches in diameter, and you can see the damage it did to our pork steak pectoral. As far as our ribs on the front of the target, a lot of damage there, too. Now, because the pattern didn't spread out very much, it concentrated most of the pellets on only a couple of the grapefruit and chewed them up pretty well. Now, as far as penetration, some of the pellets were stopped by the ribs on the front of the target. Some are all through the grapefruit, but the great majority of them were stopped by the ribs on the back of the target. No penetration occurred, they're just laying on those ribs. So looking at this, I'd have to say our 20 gauge steel shot looks fairly effective. Now let's compare that to 12 gauge. So now we'll try our Mossberg 500 and our Remington 12 gauge 2 and 3 quarter inch 1 and 1 8 ounce of number 4 steel bird shot. Well, I've got the meat target taken apart, and I can sum up the results in two words. Very disappointing. The gun I'm using has an improved cylinder bore barrel, and at this distance, the pattern's usually fairly small. With this particular ammunition, the pattern was a lot larger, and the pellets were spread evenly throughout the entire target. And the great majority of those pellets were stopped by the ribs on the front of the target. The only damage that was incurred by our grapefruit lung tissue was around the edges where the grapefruit wasn't completely covered by the ribs. None of the pellets made it through to the ribs on the back of the target, and the damage overall was minimal. So this tells us that not all steel shot is created equal, and any time you switch shot, you need to pattern your shotgun. Now let's try the 3-inch Magnum 12 gauge. 
And now our Winchester 12 gauge 3 inch 1 and 1 8 ounce of steel BBs. Now with the steel BBs, again we see that the pattern opened up quite a bit. The ribs on the front of the target have impacts from the top to the bottom, but in this case the great majority of the BBs went clear through the ribs on the front of the target. Almost every one of our grapefruit is perforated, most of them by several projectiles, and the ribs on the back of the target have a lot of holes in them. A lot of the pellets were stopped by the ribs on the back of the target, but a lot went clear through. So this looks like it would absolutely be lethal. Well, we've seen the effect of steel shot on the meat target, but how does that compare to lead shot? I've demonstrated this on several previous occasions, but at the risk of being redundant, I'll demonstrate it again today. I've got my Mossberg 500 loaded with Remington 12 gauge, 2 and 3 quarter inch, 1 and 1 quarter ounce of number 4 lead bird shot. Let's see what this does. Well, the first thing I noticed about our lead bird shot is that it held a much tighter pattern than the steel shot did. It did a lot of damage to our pork chop pectoral, put a really nice big hole through the ribs on the front of the target, it did a lot of damage to our grapefruit lung tissue, and the majority of the pellets were stopped by the ribs on the back of the target. There's one more point I want to make about steel shot, and my Remington Model 11 will help me make the point. But first, side note, I used this firearm recently in a presentation where I described it as blowback operated, and people were eager to tell me that I'd use that term incorrectly. Now, auto loaders can function in many different ways, including gas operated, recoil, long recoil, blowback operated, and a lot of people will use the term blowback generically to describe auto loaders that are not gas operated, in the same way that you can buy Coca Cola, Pepsi Cola, RC Cola, Shasta Cola, and some people will just say Coke to describe the entire genre. I use the term generically, and I shouldn't have. Actually, this gun is long recoil operated, at least according to the sources I read. But to get back to the point, because steel shot is lighter than lead shot, there are some people who have concerns that it won't function correctly in auto-loading shotguns. Well, I have my Remington Model 11 loaded with Remington 12 gauge, 2 and 3 quarter inch, 1 and 1 8 ounce of number 4 steel bird shot. Let's see how it works. works just fine, and steel shot has operated just fine in any auto-loading shotgun I've ever used. So the takeaway from all of this today, well if you choose to have a home defense firearm and you choose for that firearm to be a shotgun, some people will, based on their over-penetration concerns or perhaps their local laws, choose to load that shotgun with birdshot. And as we've seen today, with the right ammunition choices and at home defense distances, birdshot can be very effective. But what about steel birdshot? Well, I wouldn't want to be on the wrong end of it, and I'd say it's better than nothing. But based on my experience with steel birdshot in the field and the results of today's demonstration, steel shot would not be my choice. So as always, don't try this at home on what you call a professional, and thanks for watching the Steel Bird Shot in Your Home Defense Shotgun video.